Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 is a game I had rarely played before recently getting my hands on it, and I've got a great video breaking this game down in all of its beauty on my channel already. But, rather than leaving this video to go check that one out, let's instead take a look at the next game in the series that improved every single thing that the first one did, and added more sweet features I didn't even know were missing from the first one. If you like these N64 game breakdowns, please consider liking the video, or even subscribing to my channel. I put out new videos like this every single Friday, so if you want to see more, you know what to do. Booting up Pro Skater 2, things are already looking incredibly fresh compared to the first game. Rather than a boring text menu with limited options to select, we now have this cool stylized skateboard wheel menu. And for myself, the first option I noticed on this menu was the Create Skater button. I remember creating a skater as a kid in a bunch of different skating games I was able to play at my friends' houses, and this immediately gave me a burst of nostalgia. The skater creation was pretty limited, and it does still look like an old N64 game no matter which way you slice it, so you won't be able to make someone that looks exactly like you might hope. Well, I guess unless you look like this guy. But it was still a nice feature to kick off my Pro Skater 2 experience. You can also customize every single trick you're able to do with your skater, which is a feature available to every skater in the game by the way, not just the created ones. And I thought that was pretty awesome. But anyways, here's how I look. I finished creating my skater, and I moved on to play the career mode. Of course, we've got all the skaters from the first game here. Tony Hawk, Bob Burnquist, Kareem Campbell, Rune Glyphberg, Bucky Lasik, Chad Muska, Andrew Reynolds, Jeff Rowley, Alyssa Steamer, my favorite skater, and Jamie Thomas. On top of these iconic picks, we also have new additions in the form of Steve Caballero, Eric Costin, Rodney Mullen, and Milo. Oh, hey, look at that. My creative character is actually playable in the career mode. Of course, I'll be playing him for my first playthrough of the game, although it should be noted that it is a bummer I'm not playing as Alyssa Steamer. I'll definitely give her career a shot on my second play. First levels first, we're going to the hangar. This park is basically just a huge warehouse with a cool decommissioned plane to skate over, a sweet halfpipe, plenty of grind rails and ramps, as well as a helicopter equipped with grindable helicopter blades. This skate park just feels to me like a spiritual successor to the first level of Pro Skater 1. It's a huge warehouse, obviously, which is similar, but you also start on this pretty big downhill section giving you plenty of speed to work with right out of the gate. But the way things work here is completely redone. Instead of having 5 goals per level rewarding you with a secret VHS tape, we actually have a ton more goals to complete here. High scores and pro scores are still goals that we need to accomplish, but we also have the added 6 score that is generally much, much higher than the pro score is on every map. Then we've got the skate letters, objects to smash, and a secret VHS tape hidden somewhere in every level just like the first game but we also have 5 unique floating collectibles to find in every level, specific tricks that we need to perform often on specific pieces of the map, and there's a goal for completing every goal and picking up all of the floating cash in every level. Oh yeah, so there's cash in this game. Completing missions in this game will reward you with money, and these floating bills will also add to your good collection of cash. Cash can be spent in a variety of ways, such as buying new boards or new tricks, but I most often use it to better my stats for my character. Better stats is something you would normally get by collecting more VHS tapes in the first game, but being able to decide all of these stats on your own as you increase them is a really nice addition, and having money to work with for the way that you do it is pretty video gamey as well, rather than just having your skater magically become better as you progress through the game. Anyways, I'm not going to go as in-depth as this for every course in the game, as there are quite a few of them, but I do think there's something interesting to talk about here for a lot of them. We've already covered how the hangar feels like a spiritual successor to the warehouse from Pro Skater 1, but many of these levels actually hold a similar feeling. Coming after school from Pro Skater 1, this game has what is literally called School 2, and it feels quite similar. The Skate Park Chicago competition level is kind of played out better with an indoor skate park level that is Skate Street Ventura. Downtown Minneapolis has been done justice with a better city level in the way of New York City's skate course, and Burnside Portland feels to me like it's been somewhat recreated in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania's course, especially with this beat up skate park hiding in the back of the level over here. Plenty of these levels share the feeling I got from the vibe and playability of the courses from the first game, and I just love that. The courses in Pro Skater 2 though are all much bigger and more interesting, and honestly, they just pull off the feeling of the place that you're in a lot better in my opinion. Aside from the courses that we have in this game, we also have competition levels the same as we did in Pro Skater 1, but in this game, I find them to be much more difficult. While in the first game, the top scoring computer would start out easy on the first competition and end up scoring huge points in the later ones, in Pro Skater 2, they start out hot and they don't stop. In every competition, you'll have to beat a computer player scoring straight 
straight 90s and higher per heat that they play, and they can be really difficult. I myself haven't even beaten them yet, and my stats are completely maxed at this point in time, so maybe I will soon. The challenge is quite fun though, as there are plenty of different ways to approach every competition level here, given the sheer scale within them. But let's step out of career mode for a second. How does the rest of the game shape up to the first? Well, we've got the same single session and free skate game modes giving you either 2 minutes to rack up a score or unlimited time to play on any level respectively, as well as a multiplayer mode. The multiplayer mode here is just as good as it was in Pro Skater 1, but actually holds a little more fun for the player than before. We've got the regular trick attack mode, where you compete against each other for a higher ending score, the graffiti mode from the first game, where getting better points on a single piece of the park will paint it your color and outdoing your opponents will allow you to steal a ramp to your own color, we've got the horse mode from the last game where you compete directly on one slice of the skate park to get the highest points in a single jump or grind, but from here our options get a little more broad than Pro Skater 1's did. We've got a brand new multiplayer game mode called Tag, which is exactly what you think it is. You run around for about 10 seconds before one of the two is labeled It, and you must go find the opposing player in order to tag them and make it your turn to run away. Another classic game turned cool with skateboarding, and I'm all here for it. This one seems like a lot of fun to play with friends. And finally, we have what my friends and I felt like was missing from the multiplayer in the first game, and that is multiplayer free skate. It's so nice to have this here for the times that you don't feel like competing and would rather just sort of play a skateboarding game together and have fun. On top of everything, all of these modes have time limits selectable right at the start of the round, which is awesome. Not being tied to a 2 minute time limit in multiplayer is such a win for Pro Skater 2. The multiplayer in this game has been very much upgraded from the first game, and even though you can't explore these levels in their full glory in multiplayer because certain paths are cut off, it kind of still allows for two players to play within the same area more often than not, which is really nice. If I weren't seeing the other player most of the time because these levels are so much bigger than the first game, it wouldn't have the same feeling that multiplayer should where I'm constantly running into the other player. Finally though, let's talk about the mode I truly didn't see coming for the second game in the series, the park editor. There's not much to talk about here, honestly, it is exactly what you'd think it is. It's just amazing to me that it made it into the second game of the series, and on the N64 too, no less. As if creating a skater wasn't enough, the fun becomes completely unlimited by allowing you and your friends to create as many tracks as your memory cards can hold in order to promote more fun competition for a longer time. Overall, every piece of Pro Skater 2 seems to have had the devs in the lab considering all sorts of ways to make the gameplay from the first game better in every aspect. Aspect. It truly did surprise me just how much better this game is than the last, considering I loved the first one as much as I did. Let me know down below what your favorite piece of Pro Skater 2 is, and while you're down there, maybe drop a like on this video. I make videos like this on N64 games every single Friday, so if you'd like to see more of them, feel free to consider subscribing to my channel, or if you don't want to do that yet, maybe just click on one of the videos you see on screen now. As for this week, my name is Milo, and I'm out.